Wow. You know, I completely forgot to uh, tell the car to charge to 90%, which is something we very much need. We're going in about an hour, Jasper. Okay, next thing I need to do quickly, I'm just gonna try and glue that down. No idea if that's gonna hold or not. I mean, it's not the end of the world if it doesn't. Ultimately, with me learning and trying new things, board's gonna get knackered. I just figured I'd try and keep too many big bits from flaking off right at the beginning. That is the biggest Father's Day card I've ever seen. Now we're heading off to see my father, who doesn't live near here, so a little bit of a drive to get there. Time to zip through the next 80 miles. And we're here, fantastic. Jasper just woken up, Grandpa's just got back in his Morgan. And what a day to go for a little ride in a open top. Hello, happy Father's Day. You having a look at the Morgan, Jazzy? What we're gonna be talking about today is racing. Because the thing about racing in general is it's always been used as a kind of way to promote different vehicles or different technology or different manufacturers and it works in exactly the same way with electric vehicles and you can tell that electric vehicles are starting to become more mainstream from the fact that EV racing is becoming more and more mainstream actually the TT zero was going to be my backup thing to do if I didn't get to go to San Francisco I was going to go visit my sister over in the Isle of Man and and see the TT Unfortunately, no, fortunately, I went to San Francisco instead this year, so next year I'm gonna to go to the TT Zero. But it looks amazing fun, and I'd love to actually have a bit of a snoop around some of the technology they've got on those vehicles. But we haven't worked out what the big funny silver hoses going to the bikes were for. I think they might have been to cool the battery. Oh, yes! A thing I haven't shown you, James. This is so exciting. Electric car charging posts. Are they Tesla ones? Yeah. Oh, thank God for that. Where is that? That is at the Manx Motor Museum. Oh, the Manx Motor Museum. So that's fantastic news because it they means look, when look, we look, go look, to look, the look, Isle of Man, look, 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 look. we can Tesla. actually charge. <laughs> Very exciting. Right. Now, let's get these off Lucy before kept I... Saying, we told James, we told James. <laughs> Yeah, that makes a massive difference because uh, my Hello. sister went to move to a house without, you know, good off-street parking or in fact any off-street parking. When it comes to EVs, the challenge is always the public perception of them. That's why Tesla did such a massive favour to the whole zero emission vehicle movement. Is that the right phrase? I hate calling things movements. It makes me sound like a political activist. But the EV... I don't know, movement, I give up. To begin with, certainly, it had a massive image problem. Everyone knew EVs, they'd seen them for years. They were called milk floats, they had lead acid batteries, they weighed two tons, and they went at about 10 miles an hour downhill. Not exactly a list of features that people would be queuing up to go by. Then Tesla came along with the Roadster and everyone went, Wow! But still, it takes a long time to change people's minds on things. I mean, as, as recently as 18 months ago, people were still saying to me when I said my car is electric, oh, can you take it on the motorway? And now we've got things like Formula E and the TT Zero. These are races where hopefully, like with all other races, the public will look at the vehicles and go, wow, these things are so fast. They look so fun. They're dangerous. All these words that make the vehicles sound exciting and energetic and desirable. And then as that desirability factor goes up, the manufacturers start going, well, oh, we need to build these. And the public start demanding the ability to buy them and the choice in those kind of vehicles. Yeah, I am very excited to hopefully go to the TT Zero next year. And of course I will be bringing all you guys. It is now time to head out and get dinner. It's a four o'clock dinner. <laughs> I was aiming for lunch, but they didn't have space. Are we going in the, in the mini? You're going in the mini. Daddy and Mummy, you, you two are going in the Tesla car. Okay. 
correct. True, and it's in weather like this that I'm thinking Tessa really need to do a convertible one of these. Hey dude, very cool. Give me a thumbs up. You're doing your exercises, Jasper. You started doing this weird thing where he basically just runs from one end of an area to the other and back again, over and over again. There you go, Dad. Thank you. We're in the middle of the restaurant. Just letting the car cool down. Okay. Hot sticky day. Lovely day. Amazing day. Beautiful day. I love sunshine. Oh, hay fever's going a bit wrong at the moment. I did take a, a Benadryl. It was one that my dad had and uh, I'm not sure it works. I've just taken another Benadryl and I'm waiting for that to kick in. Well, that was a fun meal and we all enjoyed ourselves. Jasper was a nutball. I think the heat has kind of made him behave a little bit more naughtily than, than normal. I'm sure he'll be back to his good old self tomorrow. It's gonna be a lot cooler, I think, tomorrow. T today has been quite exceptionally warm. It's pretty much 30, 31 degrees all day long, I think, which for the UK is, it does that a few days every year or two. I know obviously there's a lot of people sitting out there going, oh, that'd be ridiculous. Ugh, you people must be stupid. But the problem is, right, if you're not used to a temperature, then nothing is set up for it. It's a bit like when it suddenly gets drastically cold here and there's snow everywhere. And countries where you get loads of snow look at us and go, what? Why it, Why are they having trouble driving down a road with a tiny bit of snow on it? And there are accidents everywhere. And that's because nobody buys snow tyres. Nobody buys snow chains or snowshoes. They just don't do it. You know, you, you go shopping and you don't take your big solid skiing jacket because you think, oh, well, it's winter. You know, it's England. It won't be that cold. So you go out in a sort of thinnish jacket and then you're like, oh, blooming heck, it's freezing. If it did that regularly, people would be used to it. And the same with sun. This house hasn't got aircon. Most houses haven't got aircon, in fact. If you went to Italy and asked that same question, you'd find everything had aircon. So yeah, when it comes to EVs, like anything else with cars, people are always looking for ways to market those and to push out awareness of them to a greater audience. Racing, I think, is actually a really, really great way to do that. And that's basically what you've got with TT0 and with Formula E. It's a marketing tool, an effective marketing tool. And what's great about it is it's actually hopefully going to push the more fun, exciting end of EVs, because that, I strongly believe, is the end that's going to gain traction quickest. One more advantage to uh, having electric racing series of one sort or another and that is from a technology point of view because the competition element in that race environment it is it works exactly the same way as biological evolution in that it pushes the companies to try and get more and more and more out of their machines and not just accept the status quo something that i think a lot of EV manufacturers actually could do with being a bit more like. There does seem to be a bit of a tendency to go, oh, well, you know, everyone does a 24 kilowatt hour battery. That's all we're gonna do. Come on, guys, push the limits. Well, I think we're going to bath Jasper here and put him to bed in the car, which is a great way to get things done because it means when we get home, we just take him out, stick him in bed. You got your laptop, so we're heading home now. Happy Father's Day, and thank you for the footage. Thank you for the footage. Cheers, guys. Bye. And the 80 miles back home. Time to get Jasper to bed. It's late. Oh, okay. Jasper is asleep now. Poor boy, he was so knackered. I think the heat really sort of took it out of him. Well, that and the exercise. So, see, what kind of person? decides to do mini bleep tests at a pub on Sunday in 30 degree heat. 
crazy. He must take after his daddy, who's also a little bonkers. You know what? I've been recording the sound on this thing today, at least whilst I'm doing sort of static shots with this little camera. It seems to be the way to do it, but one trick that makes life so much easier is only do one shot with the camera for one recording in the audio, and then syncing is really easy. If you have lots of camera clips and just one big audio or a couple of audios, that's when it gets really time consuming, trying to make sure that you've got the right bits, you know, synced. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have, remember to like it, share it, and subscribe if you haven't already, and follow me on Instagram if you don't already, and I'll see you tomorrow for the next installment of my daily vlog. Bye. It's annoying that you happen to be on the slowest corner possible. But it was a hairpin, you see. Yes, I can see that, but they're not flying by at a hundred and no, something miles an hour, are they? No, they're not. Well, you could say something about that. Well, I won't have a choice, will I? I know. That's what we're doing now. Oh. <laughs>